Oh no, oh no, oh no. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Let's Talk Liverpool and five straight home defeats in the Premier League. Let that sink in. Let that sink in the gravity of what we have just done in it from a negative standpoint. We have lost five straight games at home in the Premier League as defending champions. Just absolutely, like we, we've done some incredibly amazing things and there are some incredibly amazing statistics and numbers and everything that have come out of what Liverpool have produced over the past couple of seasons. But, you know, that, that figure and that statistic could be one of the most defining statistics of Jurgen Klopp's era and of, of kind of recent Liverpool history. It was a game of... Honestly, lack of ideas. It was a game in, it was a game of going into which we went in, had no idea what we were going to do or how we were going to win the game or how we were going to stop Chelsea scoring. During the game, we didn't figure anything out. We didn't figure out a way to play against them. We didn't figure out what was working, what wasn't working. We didn't adapt. And after the game, I think the players will look back and go, what the hell were we doing? What were we doing? And that ultimately for me has to come back to the manager. I've been a an advocate. If you guys have been following the, the Let's Talk Liverpool podcast now for the past couple of months, I have been a huge advocate of trying something different. Not only because it's a different challenge to our opponents, but also that it's something different and challenging for the players to learn. Um, you know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. And by God, if I see us play another ball out to Trent on the right-hand side with one or two players in the box with four or five defenders and Trent tries to cross the ball to do something, I'm going to lose my shit. It's, it's, it seems like that is the only tactic. Not even to go out onto the left anymore. I feel like even Andy Robertson isn't getting into a lot of those positions. It's just the same ball out to Trent every single time and you know yes Trent's not been on it in terms of the the quality of his delivery but what what do you what do we what do we want him to do right what do we want him to do the reason the reason uh, over the past couple of seasons that that form of attack and, and the 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 way we've scored from uh, and the amount of assists the wing backs have got is because there was a threat from both sides and there was a threat in behind right so the defenders and the teams didn't know didn't know which one to defend against, which inevitably gave more space and time to the fullbacks. But now, when there's nothing going through in the middle, there's nothing going through the left, the teams are just letting us pass the ball out to the right. They're just letting us pass the ball out there, knowing that we can't hurt them with balls into the box, knowing Trent's not going to, you know, play a cute pass or anything like that. And um, we, we have now, for five straight home games, done the exact same thing, made the exact same mistakes every single time and it's just not good enough anymore it's just not good enough maybe we're all very entitled Liverpool fans now and have just got used to you know a taste of the good life over the past couple of seasons but what we've what we've seen in the not only just the past five home games but but just the past like two to three months of Liverpool football has just been just just been absolutely horrendous to watch and it's not as even it's not as even if like we're trying and making chances, but maybe defensively we're a little bit poor. Yes, we know we've got defensive injuries. And yes, we know we've made some defensive mistakes in that time as well. But we've offered absolutely nothing to our opponents to break them down, to score ourselves and to really cause them any problems, which is just inevitably meant, you know, when you're not put, when, when any team, right, you've got the braver teams who come in going, in start the game going, Liverpool aren't going to uh, cause us many problems. Let's press from minute one. Let's get on the back foot. Let's get an early goal. And then you've got other teams that are coming against us who are kind of going, okay, now we respect Liverpool. But then 30, 40, 50 minutes in, they realise we're not doing anything and they realise they can push up, be braver. That's exactly what we've seen. The, the Burnley defeat for me is one, a great example of that. Burnley came back, respected us. And then as the game went on, they realised, wait, what are we scared of? There's nothing. This Liverpool team are doing nothing. And let, let's step on the front foot and let's create some chances. Let's go out and score. Let's go out and get three points against Liverpool. And we have just become... We have honestly become just ridiculous. Like, I genuinely can't think of 
of of many words to describe how we've played but let's let's talk about this game specifically then so starting into the game starting the game obviously Fabinho was back in Allison was back in as well uh, Fabinho has been out for now the last couple of weeks and uh, Kabak, he was partnering Kabak in defence. I think they played one game together, I think, just before Fabinho got injured. Um, uh, and now we're back to, you know, what is probably most likely going to be the centre-back partnership for the next couple of games, unless touch wood, anything bad happens in terms of uh, an injury standpoint. But the midfield was the same as it was against Sheffield United with Gini Wijnaldum in the holding position, uh, Thiago and Curtis Jones, and then the usual front three. Uh, and, and my hope, my optimistic hope after the Sheffield United game was that playing against five of the black, playing against a system that is similar, not the same, but similar to the way Chelsea play would have helped us prepare better for the Chelsea game. But what, what on earth was that? Pre like what on earth was that playing really high in the first half? Like just what was it? It's, if you're going to play that high, fine. But... If, if you got Timo Werner, Mason Mount, Ziyech running in behind you, you've got to then drop and run the man. You can't always, every single time, play the offside line because sooner or later, the attackers will wise up to that, take, you know, step two yards out, start their run two yards deeper and have the pace and just burn past you and be onside by a country mile. Um, I, I, I just, I, I get playing high. I just don't get what we were trying by by playing that high, like, so I understand why you play that high, right? The, the way, you, the reason you play that high is so you, you, it forces the midfield and the strikers further up the pitch, which which allows you to press higher up, right? And Chelsea, Chelsea got around it fairly well through some good passing. Jorginho and Kante had a very good game overall, I think, um, and they were able to play out. But as soon as they're able to play out, as soon as they're able to play past the first press, surely you have to drop off a bit. You can't still stay that deep, particularly when you've got Timo Werner and Mason Mount running in behind, who we all know are quicker than all of our centre-backs. So um, we were fortunate enough in the first half to get away with uh, a chance with Timo Werner. Like, when I first saw it, I didn't think it was offside, um, but hey... VAR is VAR and it wasn't given and, and honestly we probably deserve to go 1-0 back and uh, we didn't you know we didn't learn our lesson after that uh, we continued to play that ridiculously high but without dropping off when it was the right time to um, and it just allowed Chelsea that always that option of just you know just not even an accurate pass just literally just a lump over our defenders uh, and they would knew if they would get it if they would get it into the wings that one of their players would ultimately get the ball and that's kind of how the first goal came it's how the goal came Chelsea came it was just it wasn't even a pass forward by Kante it was just a punt forward Mason Mount was able to get onto it he was able to cut in onto his right foot and he just worked that little angle and it was a very it was a very expertly um, placed finish and uh, fair play to him it was a great goal um, I saw him doing all sorts of weird celebrations after the game. Uh, sorry, not after the game, after the goal. Um, so, yeah, maybe he's got some bets on or something like that. But it was a very good goal. So, you know, fair play. You, you can't you can't um, worry too much about that. I think, you know, in hindsight, what would we have done differently? One, you know, when as soon as the ball, as soon as Kante's got the ball, he, uh, the, the midfielder who's pressing has been beaten. That's when the defenders start to drop rather than still maintaining that line and just waiting for the ball to go over the top. Um, but then also when when he came in, for, you know he got the yard on Fabinho, but there was no one there then. You know, like if, if he's coming inside, well, where's either Genie as the midfielder or the centre back in this case, which was Trent because he tucked inside of Fabinho, pushing forward so that when he does come inside, he's met by a defender, not by a bunch of green space where he can just you know knock the ball into the corner. Um, and that's pretty much all Chelsea needed, right? Chelsea. Um, were we're gonna were uh, they're playing five at the back right so they can they've got the ability to be pretty compact and pretty tight defensively um, anyway and given they've got some experienced heads and given the way Thomas Tuchel has played in the past couple of games once they got one nil up it was going to be very difficult for us to score uh, second half as you would expect we came on with a bit of um, uh, a bit more kind of energy. Uh, and a bit more uh, pressing, which obviously we needed. You know, it doesn't take a brainiac to figure out that that was what we were going to have to do in the first half, uh, in the second half, sorry. And Chelsea, Chelsea were expecting that. Chelsea were, were sat, they sat back, they absorbed the pressure, they knew what was coming. Rather than trying to fight fire with fire, they said, come on, give us your best shot, Liverpool. We know you're not good enough. We know you're not in form right now. Uh, we know you're not good enough to break us down. We'll just sit here, win the ball back, play a couple passes, probably try and get, you know, Mason Mount and Christian Pulisic, who came on later, Timo Werner in behind. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try our luck at, you know, getting another goal. 
Uh, and as the, as the second half went on, obviously Mo Salah coming off, Diego Jota coming on, which was just great to see him back into the team. Um, I would be tempted if I was Jurgen Klopp to start him against Fulham. I obviously don't know what the injury situation is like and how many sessions and all that type of stuff he's had. But if he's fit enough, for me, he has to go into that. He has to go into that starting team uh, against Fulham on the weekend because we need something different. We just need something different. Um, but even then, as, as the game went on, you know, we didn't even have our first shot on target until something like the 80, 84th minute. And that was a header from Gini Wijnaldum that never had a chance of going in. Uh, and even in the first half, we, we had the beginning of the first half, we had a lot of the ball. We looked like we were playing with energy, but just not troubling or challenging Mendy at all. Um, and that's what, that's what I mean about like lack of ideas. Like We just had no idea how we were going to play or how we were going to break them down other than, well, let's just beat the same old drum we've been beating for the last couple of seasons and for the last two to three months. And, and hopefully it will give eventually. Um, and maybe I'm proved wrong, right? Maybe I'm proved completely wrong by all of this. And if we just keep doing exactly what we're doing, eventually it will come back um, and we'll do that. But for the moment, I can't see any other option but to adapt the way we're playing. Um, uh, adapt the way we're playing, change the way we're playing uh, so that we can pose a slightly different problem uh, to the to the Premier League and to the other teams around us um, to get us back onto onto winning terms because we need wins now very urgently. It, there's 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 you know we're not we haven't we're not blessed with loads more games left um, and unfortunately we are going to have to do something uh, probably that's on par with what we did over the past couple of seasons to rescue this season now and try and get in the top four. Um, will obviously the Champions League we're still in the Champions League and it's likely you know after our two 0 win against Leipzig that we'll go through. Does Klopp put all of his eggs in that basket? But given the way we've been playing and the, the way we've been defending, I don't think I don't think we stand any chance of really getting anywhere near winning the Champions League this year. But um, but yeah, so I think that the shout out again for Klopp for me is going to be we need to do something different. Like plain and simple, we've said it. I said it politely before, but now is no time to be polite. We need to do something different. Be it formation change, be it personnel change, something needs to change. Um, and there's no man of the match. Obviously, every player was trash. Um, no one deserves to be man of the match. And uh, I'm going to leave it for that, guys. I, I don't see if this is probably one of the most ranty episodes I've ever had, but uh, I just feel like I need to get it out and it needs to be said because if we carry on doing what we're doing, we, we will not get out of this right and we will finish possibly, you know, as low down as 8th, ninth, and even 10th position. But thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you again for the Fulham game.